And this like little uh, statement that we did right here, this is like super important. This means that every time you have a single Celo subgroup, that single Celo subgroup has to be normal. That's the takeaway from this right here. So if this is the case, then P is also normal. Now, if Q is incongruent to one mod P, then that means Q cannot be one of these, right? So NP is either one or Q, right? But if Q is not one of these, then it can't be Q. Then notice now we've got two normal subgroups. Now we have normal subgroups, uh, P, Q, order, P, and Q, right? But now that means that P, Q is a subgroup of G, right? Because anytime you've got a single subgroup that's normal and you take its product with another subgroup, you always get a subgroup, right? Now, if you've got two non-normal subgroups here and you smash them together like this, it's not gonna be a subgroup. But in, if you've got one of them that's normal, you're okay. And in this case, we have one of them that's normal, right? Yeah. With the order of P, Q is equal to the order of P over times the order of Q over the order of P intersect Q. But we in fact know what the order of P intersect Q is um, because P intersect Q has to be one, right? Because look, P, all of the non-identity elements of P have order P because it's prime, right? All of the non-identity elements of order Q of Q have order Q because it's prime. So if it's in both, then the only thing that's possible is for it to be the identity element, right? So that means that this is equal to uh, little p times little q, which is equal to the entire order of the group. So check it out. We've got G is in fact equal to the internal direct product of PQ, right? But if both of those are normal, the internal direct product, actually this is true even if they're not both normal. Even if they're not both normal, it's an internal, well, that's not told. Okay. Even if they're not both normal, they are an internal product. 